What's up, guys? Here with you with FC Wonder Kid podcast number 22. Here with my guy, Bretson. How are you? Doing well. I, I need you to wish me luck because in a couple hours, I'm going to be uh, taking a one year old and a two year old to their first soccer game. Oh, I'm sorry, football game. Uh, <laughs> I, it's either going to be the best thing ever or it's going to be the. I don't know. It, it'll be. Well, a- I'll, I won't wish you luck, but I'll congratulate you because oh. that is a big moment for you in your life. And yeah, I'm, hopefully I'll have that too in, in, in the years to come. Yeah. But we have a lot to talk about in the Champions League front, right? Mm-hmm. And last week, what happened with my prediction about Sporting? Like, I felt embarrassed all of a sudden seeing our TikTok <laughs> like speed and just popping up with this with this screen subtitle video this is the sporting oh yeah. my days yeah like yeah. what are your thoughts on that game <laughs> well well i mean i think the comments actually ended up answering it on its own uh there was only one player that was not there right and it was noon mensch he was not there uh he had he had uh you know he's off in paris uh, they didn't have a great time either midweek um but hey that's got to be the answer now i mean you you would know why uh, mm-hmm. more more than I would but yeah a 5-1 drubbing to start your uh, Champions League group stage that's that's not good not good at Look, all there, there is a justification though like okay. I'm not going to say it's the total justification of of Sporting losing 5-1 but the truth is coach the captain didn't play okay he's the main voice of the team he's the leader of the team and then you have the leader that doesn't speak with his voice, but what, the, but, but with how he plays, sure. and that is Pot. Pot. Okay, sure. Pot is the leader with his actions, the goals, the assists. He wasn't there. The top goal scorer of Sporting didn't play. So I'm not just, I'm not saying that that is enough to justify. Right. And Gonzalo yeah, uh, got injured uh, hey. right at the start. Yeah. Okay. So the I- the situation wasn't very clear, but. We do have something to blame after the 5-1. And yeah. that is Ruben Emery needs to sign center backs. Mm. There was a clear notice that Sporting don't have enough center backs in their team. Yes. So if there's anything from that 5-1 loss that I would criticize Ruben Emery, it's from not having enough center backs in the team. Can they, uh, can they yank Karezma uh, back or no? <laughs> Edu, <laughs> and like, I, I, I'd let him in Tondela. Okay, yeah. he'll improve a lot there, and but Edu, like he he'd seem good now. He'd be good to have, but fair enough. Yeah, well, therefore, I, I, and I want to mention another player in that game, Anthony, yeah. Anthony, uh, the Ajax right winger. Yeah, Anthony is ready. Okay, He's I am not expecting to see Anthony next year at Ajax. No, he's too good to stay. He's too good to stay. Well, we, we also got to put some uh, respect on the name of Sebastian Haller, right? Four goals in one game. Uh, I think that puts him up there with uh, with some esteemed company in the form of Marco Van Basten. And I believe it was his Champions League debut too, but scoring four goals, one game. Um, and then, I mean, for Ajax to come back and follow that up with a nine-zip win over the weekend, that's ridiculous. 14 goals in two games. That was insane. That was insane. That that game. That like yeah. nine nil. That, so they scored fourteen goals. Ajax. Yep. In the space of like five days. Yeah. And and <laughs> here's here's the best part of this, Alex. The best part of this whole thing is Sebastian Holler when he was signed from West Ham last year. <laughs> they forgot to register him for Champions League football, <laughs> and here I he is. Remember. It's unbelievable. Bobby, yeah. But you remember that did that. That that managed to show how good Brian Broby was That's true. at the time. We were really happy about that, I remember. Just in time for him to leave in a free, right? <laughs> Off the Red Bull Leipzig. So uh no, well, I mean Ajax Ajax are uh, they were clinical. I mean, they were mm-hmm. absolutely clinical. When they got a chance, they put the ball in the net. So uh, yeah, but you're right. Uh, sporting is it is it salvageable? That's the question. I mean, hey, five five goals given up, but it only happened in one game. If they can, um... and it's not easy. Like Besiktas won't be an easy game, no. nor Dortmund, of course. Dortmund right. will pass, but and let, we can mention now Dortmund, Jude Bellingham. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my days! Like Jude Bellingham is now dominating in the Champions League. He's not now. Like last year, he was already 
with the with the with that screamer cold picture after that celebration yep. in the quarterfinals. But this year, like that goal, I don't know. He seems better, and that is scary. Okay, <laughs> that is scary. It's funny. Like I don't I don't know who hurt him or why he feels the way he does, but he plays with such a chip on his shoulder um, that. You, you just I, you feel like this is like some grizzled veteran that um, I don't know has been mistreated by his team the way he just <laughs> all over the field he's proving a point in every play um, and he becomes the what the youngest player to ever I think score in consecutive Champions League games beating a certain Kylian Mbappe by a week I think yeah that's pretty amazing I mean unbelievable I mean that is a kids 18 i don't i don't get it and now we're doing this again last week we were talking about 18 year olds now we're talking about virts musiala and bellingham again again carrying their teams in many respects and it's it's amazing it's amazing but but we can talk about the kids that are the future which are carrying the teams and we can talk about the underdogs too yeah. which yeah. something happened okay in switzerland which we weren't expecting. Man United losing yeah. to Young Boys. Oh my goodness. Okay? Yeah. For me, any Man United fan watching that game, they say to themselves, Ollie out. Yeah. The moment you're switching Cristiano and putting Lingard, mm -hmm. and Lingard is the assist to the goal. Okay, this is... I don't know who's speaking, but someone is speaking to the Man United fans saying, this is not your man. This yeah. is not... Your man, in my opinion, okay? Yeah, no. But, yeah. I, it, it, yeah. I, it's completely understandable for people to think that, right? <laughs> I mean, you need a goal, and you take Cristiano Ronaldo off. That makes – I don't care whatever way you want to try and justify that. In fact, if that was Sir Alex Ferguson, I bet you people – they might not be going, you know, SAF out. But <laughs> people would be questioning that decision unless, of yeah. course, Ronaldo comes out and says, I don't know, I was playing on a broken leg or something. You don't take the man out that will score the game winner. It's just that simple. And sure enough, it was an American that winds up scoring the match winner. And the what? A little later on, Jordan Sabachu, sorry, Jordan Pifak, um, scores that match winner. But uh, I don't know, man. Ronaldo standing, shadowing OGS afterwards, like basically coaching the team from the sideline afterwards. That tells you all you need to know about what Ronaldo thought about getting subbed out. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, so Man United fans, like, it's, I think it's a serious, serious thought now. Like, they're thinking about a substitution. Like, I, I, in my opinion, because the reactions that I'm seeing of Cristiano, like, they're not normal. I'm seeing Cristiano do this. Yeah. I'm seeing Cristiano do this. Yeah. I'm see, I'm seeing Cristiano react all the ways that you shouldn't <laughs> to a manager. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, this is a prediction here. And mentioning underdogs, we mentioned young boys. Now we have to mention Sheriff. Yep. Okay. What happened, Shakhtar? Like that was, that was that was a surprise there. Like I wasn't expecting Shakhtar to lose points, especially in Moldavia. Or, or, so and, big and respect. Also, also in a in a pretty lopsided fashion. I mean that, that that was a solid defensive performance and pretty clinical in the offense. But uh, as they say in our westerns, there's a new sheriff in town, and. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff, I, I'm sorry, that was just terrible. But that was uh, a good one. I that mean, was a good fun. <laughs> 5,200 5, people there. I mean, you got this small setting. You got this uh, this Moldovan club that has just been waiting all of these years. Um, they got nothing to lose, and they're going to give it everything they got. Yeah, they've got some much stiffer competition coming up, but to see them win two zip, it's simply amazing. I mean, that's why you have the Champions League. Mm -hmm. But then. There's all sorts of like lopsided scores that we look at, like nine zip and seven one and six one or whatever that happened this past week. That you're kind of like, eh, okay, maybe maybe we want Super League back too. But no, Sheriff, that that was an amazing win, and and I don't know, maybe they will be dangerous. But well, you were mentioning their seven one eight one big results, and I was thinking, well. I remember Bayern Barcelona a couple of years ago. And what <laughs> happened? We had a Bayern Bar Barcelona Bayern uh, last Champions League and no shots on target for Barcelona. Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely that. exposed against German efficiency. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like, Barcelona have no chance to win the league. I'm already saying it. Like, playing like that, no chance. So you, like, 
you've revised you have now revised your la liga didn't didn't you have them like no. stripping it out or no i had with messi oh right. okay okay that's and right so, like that little, it's that, little thing that happened. it would like i'd say even the pie i we like it kind of butchered the pie playing with messi okay yeah. i'm not saying i would be hyped to see that but barcelona would have wouldn't have been so bad as people were picturing them this season with messi but without them like ah no predictions there. Like, I don't even know if they can get maybe top three in La Liga. Just it, for it, you to see how bad I think they'll be. Yeah, okay? I think the only, only silver lining you got there is that, you know, guys that we've wanted to see play, Gavi and uh, Alejandro Balde, they all got their Champions League debut. That's pretty much the only silver lining we could put on Barcelona's back here. Um, but it, it felt, yeah, with a messy exit, it felt like the decline was inevitable. Memphis Depay is going to win them some games here and there, but being able to provide a game plan around Memphis Depay to minimize his effect is a lot easier than trying to contain a Leo Messi, right? Now, Club, Club Bruges did contain Leo, Leo Messi. Contain, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put Leo Messi in quotation marks. Um, but before we go there, we do have to heap a little more respect on Robert Lewandowski. I mean, yeah. 10 games for club and country, He's either registered a goal or an assist, and that's in a row. And he's just – he's doing it again. So I know that there is this wonderful rat race between Erling Holland and Robert Lewandowski, but Lewandowski is going to go down as uh, uh, one of the best strikers of all time. I yeah. mean, I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable what he does and with what efficiency. And obviously, it's the the Kimmich, it's the, 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 the Mullers around him that are providing him with these opportunities. And every time he gets it, he just puts it up, puts it in. That um, is very true. Very good um, take. Like Lewandowski will be remembered as a legend. Yeah. But like, it's therefore, but like I, even Bayern though, I still feel like they'll have to go through a re rejuvenation process sure. with like Muller. Like I, I love him, but I do feel like there, there's going to be a rebuild there. And Musiala is going to mm -hmm. be the leader. I'm, I'm hyped. I'm mm -hmm. hyped with Bayern. As you should be, as you should be. It's and yeah. another rebuild that I would, I'm quite, I'm not. Ver it's a rebuild. It's the Galacticos rebuild. Okay, yeah. that is happening. It's in motion, and Rodrigo scored the goal with the assist, yep. the assist of Eduard Camavinga. Okay, yep. that is already showing himself in uh, at Real Madrid. Yeah. Okay, and that is amazing. He's he's arrived, and now he's yeah. already showing himself. I mean, even Ancelotti so. came out and said. I have been very surprised at the impact Camavinga has made the moment he's come, walked in the door. And that that there tells you all you need to know because once again, we're talking about an 18-year-old. <laughs> um, Champions League stage, late minutes, serves it up to, uh, I mean, that was all him. Serves it up, I, I believe, who was the pass from? Valverde also. So mm. you had Valverde to Camavinga exactly. to Rodrigo and boom. I mean, that, that, that could be something you're going to be seeing. It's also seeing Vinicius do pretty dang well over his last few games for Real Madrid. Hey, who knows? Maybe they're waking up some. It's it's the Mbappe talk. The Mbappe talk increases Rodrigo's stock, Vinicius' yeah. stock. They're all thinking, okay, we need to perform now. Mbappe is coming. Yeah, Mbappe right. is coming. Like, it's, yeah. it's the pressure. It's the added pressure that involves. But yeah. Camavinga scored in his La Liga debut. And had a winning assist in his Champions League debut for Real Madrid against Inter. What? Yeah. Like, he's, he's living the dream. He's yeah. living the dream. Absolutely. Living. Yeah. And another player that's living the dream, and I have to mention it, okay, because he's he was subbed in in that, in that match with the PSG Club Bruges. Yep. And there's a lot of wonder kids we have to mention there, okay? We got in the Club Bruges team, and we have in the PSG team. But yep. someone come, came off the bench and absolutely destroyed the Club Bruges team. And that was Noon Minch. Okay? <laughs> we had the answer there. We were getting tagged like mad saying, Well, see, he's really good. Guys, we've warned you many times. Yeah. He needs to start. It's not Ahmad Diallo. Okay? It has to be... Uh, it has to be... Um, Abdul Diallo. It has yeah. to be... Um, Nunminch, like he's a proper left back, and that's why he's arrived. So it's, let's see. It's, hey, I'm, I'm uh, hyped. Hey, but Club Rouge, I don't, I don't think he was the best player on that field all game. I know he got subbed in. Mm -hmm. Charles De Ketelaer, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're gonna have to remember him. Uh, this is this is yeah. the number ten of Belgium's future. 
Um, I mean, does he have the agility that an Aiden Hazard does? No. I mean, does he, but he's all around just progressing at a pretty rapid uh, pace. And he certainly deserves a fair shout because he was the one of the best players on the field versus PSG yes. in front of Leo Messi, holding them to a draw. And then even better, this weekend, he scores a 93rd minute match winner and just leading them all over the place in um, in Belgium. So he, I think, sandwiched in between there too. Him and Noah Lang, two of the best right now in Belgium, period. Sign a new contract, long term, which virtually guarantees that when somebody does come in for him, and we'll be talking about this, I'm sure, over the next six months or so, who comes in for him, that they will get a very, very nice fat check for doing so. But Charles de Ketelaer was, I mean, to stand out on, on a pitch that Messi's on, that's pretty impressive. I agree. And he's very versatile, Charles. Yeah. He's very versatile. Very good dribbling, very good passing ability. Every time I see him play, he's like in a new position. I've seen him playing at nine. I've seen him play at winger. I've seen him play at cam. Like, every time I see Club Bruch play, new position for him. Yeah, but he's, he's Noah, walking... Noah Lang, yeah. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like, Club Bruch saw a project with Noah Lang, a player that was unfortunately had bad luck with injuries. And they said, look, we can make this guy much better. So I'm, I'm liking it. It's a good policy they have there. So it's, Bruges, they're doing a, they're doing a good job there. It's, it's a wonderful, I mean, Ajax has had so much success over the years, obviously developing players mm -hmm. so much that they've developed excess talent and you could make a very, very solid 11. In fact, if you want to do it in the comment section, that'd be wonderful because I'd like somebody to aggregate this stuff, but you can make a very nice 11 of players that Ajax has let walk for cheap. Um, I'm not going to do it here because I didn't prepare. Uh, but but Noah Lang is, you know, first and foremost, I, he's just been very impressive for them this year. But yeah, Charles de Ketelaer being t basically walking tactical flexibility. Uh, Noah Lang it just doesn't care who he's playing against. He's going to have an impact. And the Club Bruges is, is like the Anderlecht of old. And you want to see Anderlecht get back to that. But Club Bruges is uh, very, very dominant in Belgium right now. Aside from that weird, like, 6-1 loss earlier this year, but, <laughs> hey, they've gotten through that. Um, we'll see what, what comes with them uh, group stage-wise. But I got to say, I have to ask you just one question because he's impressed me every time I've seen him so far this year, and you know more about him. How, have you been as impressed as I have been about Morato and what he's done for Benfica? Uh, I love I – I really want to say I'm a big, big fan of Murato, okay? And he was actually the player that I had most high expectations for Benfica this season mm -hmm. because of how he played in the youth league. Okay. okay. So I had high expectations there. Is he uh, performing to standard? He is. Is he a player like Ruben Diaz right now? He isn't. Do yeah. I think he'll be in two years' time? I'm not sure though, Breton. Okay? okay, he's a very good talent, but I still need to see consistency. Okay, and passing consistency, leadership skills. Uh, do I? I'm very. Uh, I don't know. I he's performing very well, but I wouldn't say he's the best center back in uh, in Liga Notch. But he's he's performing very well very, okay. for the expectations. They mm -hmm. bought him for like six seven million, and I think Muratu is develop developing himself to a, a thirty to forty million, the Ooh. least. Yeah, wow. but okay. they're playing in a three center back scheme too, okay? Yeah. So Otamendi, Vertogen, so he's learning too with all these young play uh, young players, these these experienced players Old at box, Benfica. Yeah. And George Zouge isn't an easy coach for you to just go and be slotted in as a youth player, okay. okay? Portuguese listeners know, youth players is very hard to cement yourself with George Zouge. Okay. So and Muratu is doing that. So that, right. he must be doing something very right in training sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, I would, I would expect him to sign a new contract at some point in the near future to make sure that when the time comes, he does. Because I think, what is it, 2023? Maybe or did mm. he sign a new one recently? Um, it's, it's him and Tomás Araújo. Okay. Tomás Araújo would be the equivalent to uh, Murat last season in Youth League. Okay? So, right. so Befica, uh, Befica needs to, they'll, they'll, they'll be betting on these two players, I'd say. In the, Very in good. The well, well, I definitely had one more that, that we have to talk about. Um, he's on the cusp of being over 23, and, and frankly, Manchester City 
destroyed Red Bull Leipzig and any chance that they had um, to, to even mount the comeback. But there was certainly one guy leading the way for Red Bull Leipzig, and that was Christopher Nkunku. I mean, 23, hat trick. I, I'm, I'm up there and feeling like this kid actually deserves some time with Les Bleus right? With France, mm -hmm. um, okay. because he's been pretty consistently dangerous. The, the bigger issue right now with Leipzig is uh, I don't know how much support Jesse Marsh is conjuring up. Um, there's actually been like leaks about how they don't appreciate the, the, the tactical inflexibility that, that Marsh provides. And uh, that's okay. the largest problem. Um, but in Kunku, man, putting three past Manchester City, that, that is a big part problem there with Jesse Marsh. Like, if they don't think tactics-wise, and Red Bull is all about that data analysis, yeah. okay? So if they don't think the data is matching their, their expectations, they'll, they'll cut fast. But uh, I agree. In Cuckoo, uh, in Cuckoo should, well, at least be in, like, the, the, um, the talk Pool. to be considered sure. for the blue. For yeah. sure. But... I don't think it will be at RB Leipzig, Breton. So it's I. I think he'll maybe move to the Prem next. That'd be interesting. Uh, La Liga. Mm, it, it's hard fit. I don't know. It's. Mm, yeah, it, it, I feel like for him to go to the French national team, he'll have to leave RB Leipzig. Unfortunately. That's. I mean, that's probably true. But but I was doing the same thing you were doing, trying to figure out what his next step would be, and I, I can't think of a proper team uh for him because he's he's interesting right he's mm -hmm. kind of like an enigma with this and uh he's a you know just like we can make a list of ajax castoffs um and form a really good 11 you could do the same with psg uh, i'd compare him with leon bailey type he's the enough. he's a good player yeah. and he, he'd add a lot of quality i'd compare him with leon bailey like right. he would go to an aston villa type team that, Everton that, that type. Would be good. I think Everton would be would have been a very good fit for Nkuku. Instead of Luis Diaz, I was only seeing Luis Diaz Everton. Luis Diaz Everton. And Cuckoo would have been a very good fit. And I think 30 million, they could have snatched him up. Yeah, probably. So yeah. that's yeah. a that's a quick that's a quick suggestion right there. There you go. <laughs> I think we got the, the Champions League talk um talk, talk wrapped up. Uh yeah. any anything you really want to mention? No, no, I mean I, I think we hit all the ones uh I'm sure we missed some but i i'm just <laughs> hey champions <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking we're not gonna mention that for <laughs> who? who like porto had a penalty like like they scored a goal and it was like uh it wasn't var var came in oh and it was, okay i, I so didn't catch that yeah that, that's... that happened taremi so yeah that, so that's... porto would have would have won in atletico so so yeah so europa league Europa League. I mean, I, I think I think you almost got to start with a guy named the Florian Beards. Napoli, right? Ooh, oh, the Florian okay. Beards. We get there's two big games there. It's I mean, the yeah, but Beards. But yeah. yeah, we could start with Beards because I mean, it's, he's a he, phenom. He's the youngest we're going to talk about here, and at 18 years old. Well, actually, no. I know you. I know you got. I know you got mm -hmm. one that you're going to talk about, but Florian Beards, and I'm just watching him do it right now. Uh, earlier against. Uh, I want to say it was against Stuttgart. Yeah, against Stuttgart. He delivered another goal, another assist. Midweek, kid has another goal. I, I mean, I, I don't think there's been a game yet where he hasn't registered a goal or an assist. And he's just so impressive in terms of, um, you know, how he's able to make an impact in such a small package of time. He is now officially a starter. He went from being worked into things, and now he's just kind of changing the game from the get-go. Uh, but yeah, hey, yeah, this this Hungarian team, I don't know how to say their name. Uh, do you know how to say it? Ferenc, Ferenc Veros? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say it the same way as you, mate. <laughs> it just hurt. It just, like, but, just but me you're in talking the about that Leverkusen yeah. team, and you highlight Fierts, but I, when I, I remember I saw a couple of highlights, and, and all those highlights, I was saying, I remember this kid from Celtic, and that is go. Jeremy Frimpong. Yeah. Two assists. Yeah. Okay. And I went to see the stats, and he had two assists, and then he had four key passes. Yeah. So I can't imagine how lethal he must be attacking wise at the right. But this is a very good talent for the Dutch fans to look yeah. out because there was all this talk with Sergino Dest, Sergino Dest, and they really wanted him for that Dutch national team, which is understandable. Sure. 
But Jeremy Fringpong is a very nice solution. And I do think he might be the the short-term and long-term solution for that Dutch team. I mean, that, so... that stock is rising fast, that's for sure. And th those two assists, he obviously assisted uh, Wirtz's match winner in that game. Um, but, but the more poetic thing about this is I believe Leverkusen's next game is against Celtic at Celtic Park. So Jeremy Frimpong is going to get a chance to um, assist a goal and maybe not celebrate. I don't know. Um, I don't know how. I, I think most people really enjoyed him in his time mm -hmm. at Celtic. Uh, certainly gave him a window to showcase himself. Um, but yeah, that, that move, that relatively cheap move to Bayer Leverkusen was a, was a bit of a surprise. And what I love about Leverkusen that we've talked about previously and why I have them as kind of a dark horse uh, to do really well in the Bundesliga is just the, the, the playing FM, right? I mean, Wirtz, Frimpong, Ezekiel Palacios, um, come on, help me out. Musa Diaby, still young. Uh, the mm -hmm. Piero uh, Hincapi. Even getting Patrick Sheik. Like... Yeah, even, even getting Sheik. I mean, it just feels like they know what to do and they're willing to showcase their youth. Um, but uh, sometimes it works for them. Sometimes it works against them. Midweek, uh, it certainly worked for them uh, this weekend. It certainly worked for them. So we'll see. But yeah, Frimpong, that's a good a good shout because I know his stock is rising uh, all across the board. Uh, people are starting to call in for a, a call up for him. Although you can then talk about how good Denzel Dumfries has been for Inter Milan mm -hmm. too. Um, but but Frimpong, the, that's that's a good shout. Yeah, Dumfries is the starter after those Euros. But like, I'd say he's. I, I, but I do see a ceiling with Dumfries. I hate I hate saying ceiling with players because I do believe everyone can achieve everything. But uh, I think Frimpong might be might be the the world class player, player maybe in the future. So we're talking about we Netherlands, and I actually saw a Europa League match, which was PSV against Real Sociedad, mm -hmm. and I gotta say. Mario Götz really has rejuvenated his career at PSV. He had a goal and an assist. He's the complete maestro of the team. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about Mohamed Iataran uh, that has gone to Juventus. Everybody talks about Mario Götz now at yeah. PSV. So he's deserved it. And the style of play is putting a player like Cody Gakpo playing lights out. Yeah. So Mario Götz is putting players like Cody Gakpo like everyone around, much better. So that justifies the signing. And Nodi Maduke too. So yeah. Because those diagonal passes at the right time that Mario Gotz does to the wingers, they're key, key for that PSV play. Yeah, and so it's, it's working out. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, and, and that, that was a kind of a perfect, hopefully it wasn't a pinnacle of what PSV can provide because I just saw uh, them against Feyenoord this weekend looks like they lost four zip so something yeah, yeah. came down to earth there but yeah goats has been absolutely phenomenal for them um and yeah Matawake, gakpo you're hitting all the right players uh but but Feyenoord apparently just dismantled them and it was uh luis sinistera um a 22 year old that that helped them do that but um i think they'll be okay i think psv will bounce back the same way club rouge bounced back after their 6-1 um one other guy I, we, we have to bring up because you mentioned it early. The Napoli versus <laughs> Leicester game was certainly some form of entertainment. It was like Harvey Barnes versus Victor Osim, Osimhen. Yeah. Um, he scored two goals in 18 minutes. And that last goal, that, that last goal was phenomenal. The interplay, um, the, the fact that he knew there was an on-rushing goalkeeper and he just kind of toe-poked it over him. I mean, Victor Osimhen... He's already got 12 goals for Napoli, and I don't even think he's been given the proper chance to, like, showcase himself there. But he's already only six off the 18 goals he scored for Lille before Napoli bought him for, what, 70 million euros? That was only a year ago. 70 million euros. But he showed that he can, he can dominate a game if he wants to. It's just a matter of can he do it consistently moving forward. And for Napoli... I don't know. They look pretty good this year. They look fun. I I agree with you. I agree with you putting that ton of, that pressure on him. He is 22 though. He is uh, but I I I I think he'll have. I think he'll justify these funds this season though because like he he seemed very focused in that game and very determined. 
and that goal did did show a lot of awareness and skill that you were mentioning yeah so yeah i'm 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 very hopeful i'm very hopeful for him i mean the uh, bigger the bigger question i have there is how the hell is leal still in financial purgatory when they got 70 million a year ago for victor osman you know I, I and then compound that with the nicolas pepe a year prior to that and I, i'm just sitting here going man what are they doing with this right i, I um, agree i think corona did affect them a lot leo right. i didn't even i even saw news that they wanted to sell not Sanch for half the price that's or like 25 million or 30 million like considering after the euros any top team would would keep that player and they'll ask 100 million yeah. <laughs> but i know i do understand the financial situation but and you are right something must be happening there and oh. luis Kamp is a genius he left leo yeah. okay he left leo so he must be he must be like i've been all doing all these decisions and enough enough so I, i'm going to talk about a team though that did didn't do the right decisions to in french league just like lille that mm -hmm. is monaco uh monaco they were doing all the right calls investing in the youth and all of a sudden they have this dip that i feel is going to happen with lille too and now monaco is building back up and they have matazu Okay, that I'm gonna highlight a 19-year-old. Yeah. Okay, very nice midfielder. Okay, which is playing next to the captain, which is a stud, and I'm always mentioning him being a stud. Sure. And that's Chuameni, mm -hmm. and he's so young already, the captain. And then you have Pavlovic at center back at the back. So I'm seeing Monaco and what they're doing here in the Europa League front, and I'm seeing something very nice. Mm -hmm. So the project is there. They're thinking on the future. And yeah, watch out. Matazu, Pavlovich, and obviously Chuameni. Yeah, and, and you can even add Fofana in there because, I mean, that, yeah. that, that depth that, that he's, I only think, 23 as well or 22 maybe. Um, but Monaco, yeah, they, they've built. I don't know how long they're going to be able to hold on to Chuameni, but um, mm. what, a, what a purchase that they made. I believe he was Bordeaux previously to that. Um, and Matazu, he's a Belgian kid. I think he's only 19. Um, to have that type of depth and, and um, solidify it that early on um, for him to get that chance in the Europa League, that was pretty awesome. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, I got to stay in Liga on, uh, or at least the teams, because one I've been watching, he hasn't been like lights out, but Malo Gusto, the right back for Lyon from their, okay, from their academy, he earned himself a European debut. They, they shut out Rangers, who's, you know, they're, they're no slouches per se, but he's the second youngest player to feature in all European competition on that first match day. And uh, I, I thought like he's explosive. He's full of flair. Um, he's getting, I mean, he just like most of these modern day attacking fullbacks, he's, he's got a lot of defensive work to do, um, but he has, he's been great for them. And this was probably his best game in a Lyon shirt. So as, at an, as an 18 year old, it would be nice to see Lyon get back to their roots of developing, right? Instead of bringing in like journeymen and stuff, but you've got a lot there. Malagusto, they've held on to Awar. Awar? I always mm -hmm. screw up that name. Uh, Leon's got the ability to really build for the future, but hey, that was a, a pretty good Malagusto, uh, you know, debut, uh, European debut, I should say. I mean, did you get to see any of him or no? I, di I didn't see too much. I'll, I'll be honest. So, yeah. but it's yeah. that's a ver that's a good. I'll 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 be taking notes on that because that's a player that I don't know too much. So, but for sure, yeah. for sure. Uh, I want to highlight my my last player here, and it's a player that it's a Stadtren, okay? Because there was a big match, sure, big match in the Conference League and that was between Stadtren and Tottenham, which. I don't mind to say it was a wonder kids show over there. You had Brian Gill, okay. Then you had Dane Scarlett coming off the the bench. You had Kamal Suleimana yeah. uh, playing for play, playing for Ren. And then we have a 16 year old. Okay, he played a minute, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to say about this landmark. And he became the youngest player to play for Stade Ren, surpassing Kamavinga. There you go, Kamavinga. This kid is from 2005. Okay, and he's playing European competitions. 16-year-old yeah. Matthias Tees. Matthias Tees. Hi, sorry. Yeah. Matthias Tell. Tell. Matthias Tell. 
but they're, 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 they also Sorry. have been playing that Leslie. I can't say his last name, but uh, Ugo Chepu. Ugo I'm we're but so Ugu. so many youngsters yeah. in this match. Like I was expecting to see the Tottenham youngsters, but then I'm surprised with even more youngsters at the Stade Yeah, not so. not afraid to not afraid to throw them into the mix. That's for sure. Um, but uh, I, I I think it's it's a good shout. I think Stad. Well, Liga. Oh, let let's just go back to to them being the. Uh, the, the factory of Wonder Kids because it we just talked about what four League One teams in a row, Monaco, mm -hmm. you know, we we haven't even scraped the surface of other ones, but uh, Ren as well. Um, I, I I really like it. I like what's going on. But I am going to uh, you know me. I have a soft spot for Denmark. I have since the Euros. I had previously to the whole Christian Eriksen thing, um, and we obviously hope his recovery uh, continues to be uh, as good as it seems it is. Um, but I got to bring up Jonas, Jonas Vind. Yeah. Have you seen, I mean, he plays for FC Copenhagen. Um, he had two goals for, or I think, yeah, two goals versus Bratislava midweek, but this kid, he's got seven goals in the last 10 starts. He's got 42 goals, 23 assists in a hundred overall games for Copenhagen. Okay. And he's got four goals and five starts for Denmark. Somehow he remains in the Superliga when I believe he's, already matured beyond that at 22 years old if jesper lindstrom gets a move to the bundesliga if andres dreyer gets a move to ruben kazan in the russian whatever and then scores a hat trick on his debut if muhammad Deremi and kudus goes to ajax somebody needs to pick up jonas wind okay because that is absolutely unbelievable numbers even if it's the superliga and europa league i don't care i mean that pretty good stuff right 22 year old right 22 yeah. year old playing at copenhagen he's playing as striker right i ah, remember seeing yeah. as as a winger too mm -hmm. so we're getting a player here that can adapt to yeah. so Jonas Vinch in this denmark team like all oh my days they they danish people must be being hyped okay because football in denmark is looking really nice yeah. you have a you have a good 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 group of players there and I didn't even mention Mikkel, uh, Mikkel Damsgaard or, you know, Andreas Skov Olsen. There's, there's just a lot of good talent there. And we'll see if they can develop it. They got to get the right yeah. places. That's for sure. Um, that's for sure. So if there's any players that we didn't mention in European competitions that you feel should be mentioned, please go down below and put it in the comment sections because we will answer and we'll love to see it. Like, absolutely love to see those comments. Sure. Uh, next topic is you, Fleek, because we want to know who are the next Wonder Kids that you're going to see in those big competitions. And the you, Fleek, is the stage to see. Yeah. And we really recommend it. So, any players you want to mention as a start here in the you, Fleek? Well, I mean, I, I, I think you set the stage nicely because... <laughs> You, you have to think about Virts, well, maybe not Virts, but uh, guys like Gio Reyna, okay? Malo Gusto, who we just talked about. These guys actually cut their teeth in the youth league, and it's become a very, very important avenue, obviously, because it's like the road under. It's basically if uh, Inter is playing a team in the group stages, they're going to play the exact same team in the youth league. Mm -hmm. And it makes it pretty awesome because it's like a wonder kid version of the Champions League. So anyway... I think we got 10 for them, right? I'll do five, you do five. Okay. Um, and I got to start probably with the most, most prolific of the bunch. And that's a guy that you don't hear about much uh, unless it's Liam Delap or it's uh, Romeo Lavia from <laughs> Manchester City. I got to bring up James McAtee though. Okay, James okay. McAtee had two goals and an assist versus RB Leipzig to start. Not only that, the kid is a... I think he's the Premier League two leader in goals, which is kind of ridiculous to do at 18 years old. Playing in Man City, right? Yeah, Manchester City, yep. So James McAtee, Manchester City, 12 goals, three assists in his last six games. Peak finisher, uh, knows how to leverage his pace. I I've seen really like the hardest knock on him is that he doesn't do defensive pressing or much yeah. of it. Aside from that, if you're scoring 12 goals in six games, I don't care at what level, you've got other tools that you can uh, certainly leverage to uh, to move up. So C Manchester City, I think, is locked down Liam Delap, and they not they locked down uh, Cole Palmer to new long-term mm -hmm. contracts recently. I would be very surprised 
if James McAtee doesn't get himself a long-term contract in the near future. It's just whether or not there's actually an avenue in a, I don't know, in a squad that actually needs a striker or needs somebody. It's it's very hard. It's very hard. And even Samuel Edozi, he must be thinking, like, he wants to stay in that team at Man City. Like, it's, it's very hard. Like, if... I'm going to mention a, a player that is the opposition, the biggest rivals I see in terms of academy football, and that is Chelsea Academy. Yeah. And um, I'm going to mention Harvey Vale. Nice. Okay. I saw the game against Zenit, and he impressed me so much with that goal and the assist. Okay. Yeah. It's not, it's, uh, he scored a penalty. Okay. But like, it's the overall way he played. Okay. He's like, he dictates the tempo, he does what he has to do. And then I'm seeing the Man City game, the under-23 game, and he's scoring bangers. Yeah. Okay? So this 18-year-old at, uh, at Chelsea, watch out. Harvey Vale, okay? Yeah. Ma uh, a maestro type beat, like good vision, can score goals. So yeah, I expect to see Tuchel having a hand with Jude Bell and with Harvey Vale. I expect Tuchel to start, start at least hand in a debut, a Chelsea debut in the Agreed. near future. Agreed, and I, I would even lump like a Charlie Webster in that in that trio there. But Harvey Vale, man, um, what I really really like about him, and I'm not I am not comparing him to Messi in any way, shape, or form. But kind of this low center of low center of gravity, right mm -hmm. type of thing. He just bounces off tackles. Like he's strong enough. He's not a really big dude, but he's strong enough to just like take it and move mm -hmm. on, and still kind of push on with with the play. So like you said, he's a maestro. Um, I know we're going to get probably in the comments section, the fact that Arsenal beat up on, uh, on Chelsea's U23s today, but like, Hey, Harvey Vale oh, has shown repeatedly that he can do things. Arsenal's going to, Arsenal fans are going to come in and say, and here's your Arsenal positive for the week. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Patino is a baller. <laughs> Charlie Patino is a baller. Um, and is definitely one to watch there, but Harvey Vale in the youth league, which Patino doesn't have the luxury to play in the youth league. Um, definitely one to watch. And I'm going to give you one that's relatively similar to him. Maybe less of a maestro, more of a conductor. Wait, isn't that the same thing? Sorry. <laughs> but more of like a, a metronome, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, Edouard Machu from PSG. Okay. okay. You know, everybody talks about Chavi, um, Chavi Simons uh, mm -hmm. for PSG. I mean, maybe even rightfully so, but more so because he went from Barca to PSG. Edouard Michou is very similar, I think, in skill set to Harvey Vale. Okay, yeah. Maybe a little more defensive, but less physical than Harvey Vale. Um, but he, his, his ball movement—I mean, he's like bundles of energy. Just a really, really good player. Um, I have seen, and I agree with, from what I've watched, uh, it definitely shares some similarities to a very young Brescia. No, yeah, Brescia Marco Verratti. OK, okay. Um, so certainly one to watch there and whether or not he can actually break, break through. I think he's already made his debut for PSG. I don't know if it was in a friendly or if it was like he, he did. He okay. did. He did. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's he did have the moment in which he was saying hi to Messi and he, he couldn't even believe himself. And like everybody was sharing it. Like and to be fair, <laughs> who can blame him? Who can blame thing. him? Who can blame him? Uh, I'm going to mention here a player that. I've I didn't know in the past and he plays in Benfica and he came from Atalanta last season. Okay. And that is Sher, Sher Endur. Okay? He's a midfielder, extremely tall. Uh, and he plays in the under 23s for Benfica. I think he's going to go to this youth league and absolutely dominate. All right. If you don't know about him, you will soon know. He's the type of player I'm, this is going to be bold. Ahmad Diallo left Atalanta very shortly, mm -hmm. okay? I see She Endur as the same type of player in terms of ceiling. He is one of the best players already in Befica's academy. She Endur, midfielder, complete beast, Italian, okay? So like that's it. one to watch. But And next to Ronald Camara, okay? Yeah. That youth lead team, like Ronald Camara with She Endur, that's, that's nice. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I, I I don't know. I did see his name on the score sheet, not score sheet. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it was the score sheet. I think today, um, mm -hmm. for uh, for Benfica B. So that's that's certainly uh, one yeah. I got to pay more attention to. Um, and and I feel I feel bad because I keep going back to Premier League teams, and I'd like to branch out more. But <laughs> I feel like Liverpool has to be talked about. 
you know, uh, Liverpool, we could talk about James Balagizi. We could talk about, you know, some other player, uh, Oakley Cannonier, who actually was the mm-hmm. ball boy that gave Trent Alexander Arnold the ball before the fateful corner kick in that semifinal. Uh, but who I'm actually going to talk about is Cade Gordon. Okay. Kid is 16 years old and he had, uh, I think two goals, one assist already in the premier league two this season. He Mm -hmm. can play all across the top. Um, but he played all 90 in the win versus AC Milan. Okay. So it's not really about his game there, but the fact that at 16 years old, he's starting for the U 23 starting for the U 19s. It doesn't matter. This, this rise has prompted guys like Jordan Henderson to come out and even mm-hmm. uh, Tiago Alcantara to come out and basically say, mm, this kid's the Liverpool future. He's, he's pretty good. Okay. And they were able to take advantage of Derby County. I mean, I think we all saw that yeah. Derby County, unfortunately is uh, heading into administration. Um, and they obviously knew that last year because they were selling off players left and right. Well, Cade Gordon, made the move over to Liverpool's academy, and he's already prompting a whole lot of superlatives uh, coming from teammates and coaches alike. So uh, he can play all across the top, but if you're watching Youth League, make sure you watch that name because this kid is 16 years old and doing well. So, like, that's a, such a good catch, though, right? Mm-hmm. That was yeah. a very good catch. Like, yeah. Another one. <laughs> Another one. Okay, so I'm going to highlight a player from Dortmund Academy, and that is a Swiss striker, and that is Bradley Fink. Like it. Uh, I love him. I've, I've, I've seen him play like for two years, especially with all the buzz with <laughs> Yusuf and Mokoko, yep. Like There was so much attention at Dortmund Academy. And I did see Bradley Fink, and I was surprised because... I'm not saying he's a Haaland type striker, but he's the he's very mobile, he's tall, yep. and he's got very good finishing. So 18 years old, Dortmund prospect, he might be one of the top sco- top goal scorers in the competition. Okay, yeah, so if everything goes to plan. Sorry. So you, so you basically just said he's baby Holland, right? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, well, he's only he is worth it. Yeah. He's working towards becoming baby Holland. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, he, but he's, yeah, he's, I think there's a plan to with Bradley Fink too. So, yeah. uh, I think Dortmund are, and there's the Ajax kid, the, the former Ajax yeah, yeah, kid, yeah. Julian, uh, Rykoff, Rykoff. exactly. Yes. So very high expectations with the striker position at, at Dortmund in the U. As, as always, right. I mean, they seem to always find, I don't <laughs> Just really, really good um, talent identification there. And Rykoff, uh, Bradley Fink, and I'd even throw Samuel Bamba in there. Exactly. Um, just a solid. And we really want to see our guy, uh, Damdi, uh, Namdi Collins, get back to health. Not a striker, center back. Just a phenomenal kid and a phenomenal prospect for them. And the English winger, uh, James Jitsons. Is it Jitsons? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie uh, Eng- Ingefino Gittens. Yep. yep. Exactly. The English winger, he's very nice. He's 17. So th- th- that's, that's another player that we can see at Jaden Sancho 2.0. Yeah. That, that <laughs> Coming be- from Man City. That would be nice. <laughs> so and, that, that's a yeah. crazy situation there. Well, I, I think I think it would be like remiss of us to not mention Shola Shoratire. Yeah. Uh, he already scored the match winning goal in their opener. Um, and 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 did what obviously uh I'm not going to put it on the feet of Cristiano Ronaldo, but obviously what United couldn't do it against young boys. The the young guys actually got it done against the young boys. Um, but we got to remember, like, Shola Shortiri, he's already made his debut. It wasn't that much, but he already made his debut. Um, and he's their reigning young player of the year. So he's already been named, essentially, next to the Rashfords of the world, Rooney's of the world, and um, uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, Mason Greenwood. Uh, and y- y- the kid's got like, it's just great with ball control, great retention, uh, the ability to conduct, uh, whether it's a counter or actually get back and, and, uh, organize a defense. And he's got, I think his, his best attribute is his technique. I mean, it's almost virtually flawless. It's like, it's just well above and beyond what you would expect from a kid his age. Um, and I know if you can maybe add like a little bulk to his frame, um, I honestly do believe he's one of the few, uh, well, not one of the few, there's, there's a lot in there, but short is almost a lock, uh, to mm-hmm. be a contributor for a United team moving forward. I, I, I hope Solskjaer, I if he does one thing, right. 
uh, he starts to uh, to pay more attention to Shoretiri, and I actually think he is. I think he is. Well, I, well, I have here the names of Man United players to watch, uh, and Shola Shortar. I've got to admit, he's the one that gives more guarantees. Yeah. He is. He's the best technique wise, and he is the only player I'd slot in to that Man United team if necessary, because you got Charlie McNeil, goal scorer, like mm -hmm. goals, scores goals for fun. Mm -hmm. Marc Jurado, who come from Barcelona Academy, complete player, very nice, and you got Charlie Savage in the middle. Yeah. So this Man United team is full of stars. But uh, but Shola Shortire is the one, and you're completely right. He's the yeah. one that's ready to play first team. Well, the most ready to play first team football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is yeah. that is true. So my final highlight is going to be Mateus Gonçalo, okay, of Sporting. Okay. I've seen him play like I'd say three four years, and with the COVID outbreak, it was. It was very hard for players that are under 17 and under 19 because they stopped. They just stopped. Yeah. And the fact that I'm seeing now Mateus Gonçal, a 17-year-old, playing in the youth league and balling out. Okay, he was playing really well. Mm -hmm. He's a cam that's playing on, pushing onto the wing. He's creating in the middle, and he's he's overall dictating at the tempo at in that sporting team. So I loved it. Sporting isn't the team that is used, used to the youth league. Mm -hmm. So it's a big chance for these players to show themselves. And Mateusz Gonçal. Absolutely. I think he's going to be the future player of uh, one of the future players you'll see in the sporting team. Expect. Okay. Expect to see him. All right. Well, speaking of future, uh, I know after we kind of ribbed on Barcelona earlier, <laughs> um, we, we do have to talk about their future because they, yeah. they have one thing. Well, not one thing. I mean, La Mesia. I mean, come on. You know, like yeah. they, they can develop themselves a future. In fact, they already have a, a few, if they give them the chance, surefire stars. And they even brought in on some weird loan, the Yusuf Demir of the world, um, that they could develop. And we've already seen some cool stuff. Well, I got one from Barcelona because the future is what you need to actually look at here. And it's a 17-year-old center back, not the biggest guy, Arno Casas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's probably Cassius. I don't know how to say that last name, but this kid's already shown he's a leader. He's worked his way up through. It was his uh, UEFA Youth League debut. Um, he's a distributor. Obviously, I feel like most of the center backs that come out of Barcelona uh, can actually distribute a ball. But the biggest thing that I think is, is impressive about him is just the composure. As a 17-year-old, you're not supposed to be that nonchalant on the ball, but he is, Okay. Uh, and he's capable of quarterbacking a 4A forward, or he's capable, again, of, of making sure that they don't give up on the, on, on the other end. Um, but he's the one that scored the goal that ended up beating Bayern. Actually, I think they won two zip. But he scored a goal in their win against Bayern and actually held what normally is a potent offense that Bayern provides, even for their U19s. Um, and, and the goal wasn't elegant. I mean, it was right place, right time. I think it banged in off his shin. So it's not like a, uh, a, a big uh, tool in his toolbox. Uh, but he is one that they highly regard moving forward. Although I believe he's lesser talked about than, say, the uh, Ilias Akumak and, and, and some of the others in that. Um, but Casas is a good center back, especially with a club that might need a center back in the future. Hmm. Um, one that they should probably pay attention to and, and likely are. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's yeah, well, they should pay attention. That's for sure. But will they? <laughs> I can't. I, there's no guarantees with the club, you see. No. So uh, any any more youth league players you want to mention? Do uh, you feel like we No, I, I think we might have done more than 10. And I, I had Bradley Fink, too. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure we're going to have more as the uh, as the the competition progresses. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it's. For sure. And guys, comment down below if there's any player in the youth league that we missed out. Uh, and comment to it who you think is going to win it. Because it's always so difficult. Because you never can predict the youth league. So yeah. comment down below who do you think is going to win the UEFA youth league. Like it. So let's go to the last topic here. Sure. Let's do it. Um, last topic here is the wonder kids that we feel like should we didn't mention during the podcast and we have a slot here that we really feel like we should mention them yeah and i'm gonna start here with kaiki okay kaiki just went to man city he's here 17 year old 
okay mm -hmm. absolute baller what are your expectations on him because i really think guardiola might use him you do wow yeah i i, I would i would welcome that um okay. do i actually think it's going to happen i don't know uh but and i actually don't even know what happened to who's the other one they signed Meltinho. Meltinho. yeah he hasn't played yet i believe for uh Troyes, correct but um i don't know i i I, I want to see more of them. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what are your expectations for him? Because I got to deflect this question because I have no answer. <laughs> well, uh, I'd say my expectations with Kaiki maybe it's I would put him at the same table as Ahmad Diallo. Okay. Uh, Kaiki, the truth is, and you know, Kaiki before even going to Man City, he's considered one of the best 18-year-olds in the world. I'd say it's it's there was even like a poll I'd say last year who's the best 17-year-old. And Kaiki won it. Interesting. So that's um, he may be a loan move, but considering that a striker didn't go to Man City, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think that maybe they could, or a loan, or they'll decide to play him and give him a shot. Uh, a shot. But definitely the training, Guardiola will will have a will will have a look at him. We'll have a look at him for sure. Well, that that he isn't. Mean yeah he isn't I mean, a normal talent he isn't any normal talent it's of. always a bit weird though when you uh score six goals against leipzig and then you have trouble scoring against southampton at the weekend huh um mm -hmm. may maybe th maybe that will usher in uh kaiki's uh <laughs> and different styles of play like when you're sure. playing the prem yeah. it's always compact defense like yeah, Bundesliga I, against the Man City team, they'll just go all out against each other. That's true. So, that's true. And we, we got to actually in that Southampton game, we might as well say, hey, Valentino Libermento is, is proving yes. himself a very nice Premier League uh, right back. Um, and I say that completely off the cuff, but that was in, in the you know 60 or so minutes of the game I got to watch. Um, mm -hmm. I did want to bring this up, and I know I should have brought it up in the Champions League. Um, mm -hmm. You probably were watching it a little more than me, but Jeff Felix. I mean, he's getting his chance. He's coming back to health. That was such a crazy, and, and I get it. I get it. The, the referee was likely in the wrong in terms of all of that. But he, he gets a chance to come on, make a difference this weekend uh, versus Bilbao. And yeah. 15 minutes later, he's sent off for two yellow cards in the span of two minutes. And I, it, it's just tough because you got to remain on the field to make the difference. And I don't know. Did he feel like the? Do you feel like the ref had it out for him? Or uh, it's look, just tough. it was weird. I do think like I don't like to go on top of Felix, but the truth is he revealed a bit of immaturity there. Okay. Because the ref clearly gave him gave him a yellow card. The ref clearly wasn't going with him. Yeah. Okay. They were. They was just going with him. Sometimes in life you just don't go with the people. Sure. Okay. And the ref wasn't going with Felix, and Felix says, "Tu es loco." Loco. Of course, mate, you're going to get that second yellow. Yeah. So I'm going to put the blame on Felix. Okay, because I don't think the ref, I think, I think you shouldn't be saying that you're crazy to a ref. I don't even think that's the right, the right, the right, um, it's the immaturity. That's not the right decision to do, Felix. Yeah, I mean, even so I'm disappointed. Yeah, I'm disappointed because I saw Simeone giving Felix a chance. Yeah, that's, it's true. And he does this. Yeah. So I, I, I think I'm, I'm definitely with you there because because you, you can't help anybody from from the locker room. And uh, his his duty at that point in time, even if it was crappy refereeing, um, his duty at that time was to remain on the field so that he could help his players. And yeah. um, he didn't do that. So I just really wish this re-entry post-injury – was going a little smoother for him because we all know that you know as you as you said it's not necessarily on the stat sheet but he can change a game and uh and, and i want to see that moving forward from him so i'm still confident he will do that um but i do i do have to bring up uh not really a wonder kid per se but i was probably a little premature in stating inter milan's demise okay mm. or this expectation that because you know all these massive pieces left, um, they were they were done, right? They've gotten, I mean, Jekko looks refreshed, right? Three yeah. goals for them. Lataro obviously is turning into a leader. Three goals. Mm -hmm. Scre even center backs are getting into the mix, actually getting on the end of things. Two goals for Skriniar. 
Uh, Barella is just the conductor we all knew he'd be. Joaquin Fuck. Correa, Federico DeMarco coming back on loan last year, actually getting a chance and being really, really good for Inter. Um, I know that they have stiffer tests ahead, but 15 goals scored, right, in their first few games. Mm-hmm. Only four given up. Here I was thinking Lukaku, you know, it's done, right? Uh, they just don't have any ability to get this done. Well, six goals against Bologna, six to one win. Um, they're they're really off to a dominant start. So we'll, we'll see if it continues. Um, but it, it's got to make you feel, I don't know. Uh, with, Tottenham, with Inter, uh, yeah. like with Inter, I'm more surprised about like the coach getting it through. That's like I, I wasn't even like Lukaku. Like of course, like Lukaku, Akimi leaving is like huge. But yeah. I was thinking, yeah, but without Conte, bye bye trophies. Sure. And no, doesn't seem like it. Like, like Inter will be in the contention. Inter yeah, will be in the contention. Yeah, Very, yeah. I would. It's a nice mention, but. I have to mention here something I saw in the news yesterday, and it is Serie A related, and it's Don Raiola putting on the market Delict. Delict yeah. is on the market, guys. That's crazy. And I'm going to go bold here, and I have a prediction. Delict is going to Barcelona. Hmm. Delict is going to Barcelona. Right. Why do I think Barcelona are going to get Delict? Well, well, they have a big wage okay, gap there that they need to fill. And they are, need new stars, rejuvenated stars. And I do think the marketing-wise, the leaked Frankie De Jong, this general Dutch, Dutch, the the the, the Laranja Mecanica, like we say here in Portugal, sure. um, is coming back. So I think Barcelona are going to snatch up the leaked in the next transfer market, and Raiola is already putting it in the market. That's right. my prediction here. I like it. So uh, the leaked De Jong. Yeah. The pie, the new trio, mm-hmm. the new Dutch trio. All right. Um, I mean, I, I, I can see it happening. I can see it happening. Um, now that's a, that's an interesting shout. I just so why was there a con a contract negotiation that like shut down? What was it? That, uh, it's basically I think the league's contract is in two years. Okay. It runs out, and the truth is he's not being talked a lot. Okay. The leak isn't being talked a lot, just like Ronaldo went to Schwinch and his career went a bit down. I'm seeing the same with the leak. He may be improving defensively next to the uh, Chiellini and Bonucci, not disagreeing there. But in terms of overall player, mm-hmm. he's not he's not getting very noticed right now. He's no, even not. shaved his hair and nobody knows it. <laughs> the leak has shaved his hair, guys. More <laughs> more people notice that you lost your mustache. <laughs> Notice his haircut. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> what is this world coming to? Uh, I I don't. I I can tell you. I think you might be able to start some sort of a marketing campaign for him. If we really need to, you know, make sure people understand how good the league could be. No, I'm just kidding. Because all you got to do is you put the fervor that you put behind Nuno Mendes into the league, and well, yeah. if, if you ask me, the world him. team. The, the under-23 team, I put the leak in the center back, and I put Loon Manch at the left. So I'm very happy about that. Well, I'm going to go a bit homer on this one and, and go to Major League Soccer because the uh, ascendancy or the resurgence of this kid uh, has been really impressive. And uh, it's all been – he's come back from the Olympics. He was kind of listless previously. And I'm talking about Ezekiel Barco, Okay who used to be on the radar of a lot of European clubs and likely still is now. But since he has returned from the Olympic Games for Argentina, he has six goals, five assists, and nine starts. And they've gotten eight wins and one draw out of those games. Okay? And he's really started to, like, take this Atlanta United team and lead them to... The playoffs, which is coming up soon, and I know playoffs is kind of a weird thing for your Euro uh, uh, followers used to, to, it, yeah. to understand. You know, you get that for like promotion, but you know everything comes down to the playoffs in American uh, every sport, I should say. But Ezekiel Barco, I have a feeling it's not that surprising. This play is his understanding that it's a ticket to where he wants to be, and that's Europe. Okay. And, you know, like Almiron before him, 
like even uh, I'm trying to think of the the other well no Almiron is really the only big mm-hmm. one to to come out of there. Uh, Ezekiel Barco, he's he's one that he's he's got the ability to make it. I just don't necessarily know where. And Syria well, is probably my first thought process. But yeah, you have even George Bello right coming out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So Atalanta, yeah, you're looking good. Yeah. So good that stuff. was a nice podcast, right, Bretton? Like uh, we got, we mentioned the youth league that we've been promising nonstop. Yeah. And yeah, I'm it's, tired. It's been done. <laughs> I'm tired, and, and like I said, now I have to go take my my two year old and a one year old to a, a soccer game, and either they're gonna cry uh, because it's so loud, or they're gonna love the hell out of it. And you know what? You know what would be the most devastating thing to me <laughs> is both of them awesome. grow up not liking football oh yeah with all this that you're doing if this happens they'll even have it on tape Ah. okay that you don't want that to happen so yeah guys here with ufc wonder kid episode 20 22 hope you guys enjoyed it and peace out so long